Hi, it's Colleen Schmidt, once again from Divination Counseling Service, here today to present to you Volcanus, the Transneptunian. So just briefly, Transneptunians are often considered hypothetical planets, or they're often called Uranian planets, but we've used them in astrology for more than a hundred years now with some pretty amazing results. So I want to preface with that. Volcanus is our strong man, okay? When I think of Volcanus, uh, I think of Mars energy, but again, Mars energy on steroids. And again, let's look at the glyph because I think the glyph always has a lot to say about whatever it is we're talking about. In this particular case, you see a triangle, like a volcano, and an arrow on the top, shooting up the arrow is. And that does pretty much describe the energy. So you do have a little bit of Mars going on, although Mars is usually on an angle, but it also is directed by that arrow. Well, in this case, Volcanus, the arrow is straight up. So once again, get the idea of Mars, wrap your head around it, and then once again, Mars on steroids. So keywords, as you know, I love to go through the keywords and, and I always want to refer to the fact that if you study Uranian astrology, if you're familiar at all with Uranian astrology, the Vit has the keywords in his book, but you could also get what's referred to as a transneptunian ephemeris from Michael Feast. And that's available even now. And two, you would see not only the ephemeris, but those keywords. So I'm going to go through the keywords with you. I think they're the most important thing when you're studying something initially to get really familiar with those keywords because it gives you the pathway into that energy. And in this particular case, we're looking at things like have-tos, compulsions of all kind would then come under the energy of this volcanus. This, you have to do this. It's a magnetic energy. It's forceful. It's strong physically. It's, there's a lot of power behind it. It's strength. So if you put that with another planet, say that you happen to know somebody who is either a Volcanus Sun or a Volcanus Mars, that's a pretty powerful, persuasive Pretty much sometimes, you know, they too have a little bit of charisma. So, you know, is this like we might see in a Zeus person, but this is different. This is like the strong man stuff. Um, I know when I read cards, I have a saying about the person who walks in the room and it's a sex appeal where they don't have to open up their mouths. They don't have to say anything, but that dynamic energy is there. Well, that's Volcanus as well. So Volcanus, that very have to. The, it, Volcanus is this kind of, forceful have to drive that sometimes we all have. The problem with Volcanus, as I found it as an astrologer, uh, having used these Transneptunians since the early 90s, I can tell you that the idea of people getting depressed, but not because they're depressed, but because they burnt the candle at both ends, that's a Volcanus. Okay, that's a Volcanus. Um, depression. I, I have a friend slash client, he's actually a very, very close friend, that we've talked about this on many occasions when it relates to astrology or his own personal astrology, that there are times when we do these things to ourselves. And when you see that, it, it's really obviously it's a volcanist matter. Okay. So volcanist, just to get to the logistics here, uh, only moves about... Um, really slowly, 0. 0.32 degrees, okay, a year. So um, in here, it takes 633 years to complete a full cycle, obviously. Um, so it, as again, I always like to point this out, Transneptunians tend to be very much generational. They are only going to span a couple degrees over a whole generation. I think that speaks especially to some of the aspects, some of the um, transits that we go through uh, generationally. I think Volcanus is a really good one to follow on that, particularly for what motivates us, because here again, you get this 
a feeling that there is a, a force behind this a kind of a motivation you know i have to do this i have to do this you know as a as a reader for a long time um i hear that often that you know i try to point out to a client that these are decisions that we make in life but often i will get the retaliation of uh something along the lines of i didn't have a choice i have to do this i have to do this do you really? Or is Volcanus just kicking your butt? <laughs> okay. That's the beauty of understanding astrology. So I just want to bring that up. Uh, Volcanus has made an ingress in the last year. I probably look at this in another astrology. I know I've looked at Volcanus and Leo, but I, I don't know if I've done anything on the ingress of it. Because as you all know, if Volcanus is going to be here for a really long time, what it says on its ingress might be really important, not for us to know just now, but maybe the next 50, 60 years would be worth looking at through that, that lens, if you will. So just moving along, um, I, I want to point out that, you know, if you had Volcanus conjuncting your sun, it gives a lot of strength and virility. It also, uh, once again, gives you that sort of magnetism, if you will. Um, so it's, it's like you could be very persuasive and coercive in your use of your energy, maybe not even realizing it. Because um, oftentimes, most people don't study astrology, they don't know. But it's really interesting if you can get a hold of a chart of somebody who does have Volcanus at the Ascendant or Volcanus at the Sun, uh, particularly in conversation with the sun. Uh, it's very, very interesting. Um, the, the also, you know, if you think along the lines of virility and you think of Mars, then Volcanus could be another factor. Zeus in medical astrology is inflammation, but I always think of Volcanus as a factor of a built up or stronger immune system, if you will. So in um, basically um, other things to point out, for example, if Volcanus happened to fall an aspect to your Saturn, for example, then that would be your father and the person who was coercive, whether it be good or bad, you'd have to look at the rest of the chart. It would significate that it would be a, a parent that was that uh, culprit. So again, studying these transneptunians and then looking at how they fall, particularly starting with natal charts, and maybe charts of people that we know, including ourselves, such a wonderful way to get to understand and learn these energies. Um, one of the things I want to point out before I stop this, because this one's getting long already, is that I want to talk about how Volcanus to Venus is something that I actually look for um, in charts of people who uh, are looking for love and all the all those things. Volcanus Venus is a strong attraction um, that you don't understand. And if it comes up between people so that you're looking at the dynamics of two charts and there's a Volcanus Venus there, that's a, ooh, that's a strong attraction. If you have it natally, if you have it by transit, if you have it in relationships, um, that Volcanus is, uh, couldn't be a very, very strong attraction. Now, Volcanus in... Uh, pictures with Jupiter, Jupiter, Venus, I think. But it, when I mean pictures, I mean when there's a combination, say, coming from the angles or you're looking at the axes of the planets and you start pulling in all these extra little energies. You know, Ju this is also the planet, the planet, the trans-Neptunian that forces us to good fortune. You, forced into good fortune is one of the best things I love to read in astrology. And that does always apply to Volcanus. And so with that said, since I've really been gone on with Volcanus, and by the way, it also applies in the retrograde format. It just acts a little differently. You know, there maybe there's a, a, a more of an unknowing or something that really has to be thought about when it comes to uh, the retrograde. So before I sign off, as always, uh, please contact me through divinationcounselingservice.org if you're interested in a private work of any kind, whether it be astrology or tarot, and or if you have any questions, I've got that little message box on there, get in touch with me. I'll get back to you within 24 hours, but 
get, let's touch base. I'd love to answer your questions. I'm here to help you enhance your ability to use these tools for empowerment. As always, like, share, do whatever people do with these kinds of things. But most importantly, let it be whatever you can to spread the word and help educate other people like yourself. Until next time, I bid you all happy readings.